How's it going, everybody? I am insane. <laughs> We're biting off as much as I've bit off today. But that's okay. Because I got that it takes insane people to mess with synthesizer gear. And uh, so what I'm going to be talking about is this this little lovely device right here that has uh, been just a constant companion and just my, I don't know. Melissa doesn't get jealous of it, and that's good. So. Um, yeah, so a modular synthesizer. Can someone maybe take a guess as to why it's called a modular synthesizer? Anybody want to give it, give it a shot? There's modules. There's modules, yes. Okay, what else? It synthesizes something. It synthesizes something. All right, wow, we're really... Sounds. <laughs> right, right, the different parts. Right, modular, what, is that? what that means is that, like, okay, so if you have, like, a modular truck rig, you know, you're trucking stuff, you have a trailer and you have like a, a bottom part and you have a crate on top of a truck, you know, it's modular, modular living, okay? So this is, this device, man, it, 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 it's so funny how fast the mystery of this thing will go away when we just kind of explain exactly what's happening. And what's happening is, is that each one of these little devices here is designed to go into another device, into another device, into another device until it goes to its output and then that's what you hear, right? So. You can think of it that way, right? So let, let's just say that, let's just say for the sake of, I don't know why that's right in your way. Let's just say for the sake of figuring this whole thing out that this represents a hose, okay? Each one of these cables is a hose. And instead of water, anyone want to take a guess as to what's coming well, down? Sure. <laughs> More specifically, closer, closer? Voltage. Voltage, exactly. So, in terms of electricity, voltage usually is, is the measurement of, of the speed of the electricity, right? How fast it's going. So what's cool about that is that means that voltage can do, has a couple tricks up its sleeve. Anyone want to guess what the tricks that voltage can do are? Amplitude is one of the tricks. What's the other, what's the other trick? Frequency, exactly. So that's all that this is, okay? That is so important to understand, that literally all that we're going to be doing is making frequency go up and down in, in uh, we're making voltage go up and down in frequency and up and down in amplitude. That's literally all that's happening. And what's so flippin' fascinating about that is that you can make any sound within reasonable limits. You can make, actually not really, you can make any sound you want with that going up and down. Now, this system, a lot of people are like, Analog. This is an analog system. Actually not. It is half analog, half digital. Each one of these modules might be analog or digital, depending upon the job that it does. Okay? So, so to be more accurate, we're manipulating voltage, but sometimes we're doing a conversion from analog to digital, and then we're messing around, and we're going back to analog. But by the time it makes it to any one of these cables, for the most part, some of them are sampled, but for the most part, as a, as a rule of thumb, a general rule of thumb, we're manipulating voltage, and that's it. It's fascinating. So let's go ahead and just take a little, take a little journey. I'm going to go directly from an input to an output. All right. So this is this first module here. This is what's known as a VCO, a voltage-controlled oscillator. All right. And so an oscillator. What does an oscillator do? Someone want to take a guess? I don't know. That's close. I would cycles. Exactly. Cycles. That's exactly the word I was looking for. Man, y'all are on it. <laughs> so it's gonna. What it's gonna do is it's gonna run through cycles. So let's listen to a cycle, right? This is the first thing we're gonna do. There's a cycle. It's probably coming around again here soon. Maybe I'll turn up just a little bit. There's another one. I'm gonna make it totally dry. Dry signal, that's what we need. Whoops. Forgive me. And you. Okay, so now we have a dry signal. We can hear just, right? That's all we got. What's interesting about this and what's happening right now is this is a saw waveform. And the saw waveform looks like this. It's got a rising edge that's basically as vertical as the manufacturer can make it and then it just slowly goes down, like this. So every time you hear the... That's the sound that you're hearing, right? When I start to speed that up, I'm increasing what? 
If I'm speeding something up, what am I increasing? Frequency, right, here we go. So now more, more. Anyone has a guess as to what's about to happen? If I keep going up in frequency? It's gonna explode. It's gonna, it's gonna explode, yeah. <laughs> It's going to go into what's known as audio rate. That's audio rate. It's a note, right? Because it's going fast enough for your brain to say, oh. <laughs> right? I can hear the note. When it's down here, though. So, so that's literally how you hear stuff. In, in your life, you know? Your vocal cords do this, you know? Have you ever been like, <laughs> you guys remember, what was that? Uh, a Wu-Tang album when he was like, man, remember when we was like nine and he was like, uh, 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 If I increase the frequency of my vocal cords, uh, all of a sudden I get oscillation. I didn't do that very well. I practiced that too. <laughs> But, so, so how interesting is that, you know, like, uh, your perception of stuff has to go within what's known as audio rate, okay, just like when you want to see a color spectrum, your, your eyes, whatever you're looking at has to be oscillating at a certain frequency, or actually, when we see nine times out of ten, actually, no, always, it's energy from the sun that's hitting off of something and going into your eye, even if it's, uh, you know, you flip on the light switch and you got electricity from somewhere, it's still energy from the sun, originally. And it has to go at a certain frequency in order for you to see a certain color, okay? Uh, light being reflected back to your eyes. Same way with the, uh, with the oscillation of sound. Your ears do almost precisely the same thing as your eyes. And if you were at my workshop last year, I was talking about how unbelievably intrinsically linked those two things are, okay? But we don't need to go too far off topic, even though that stuff is so interesting to me. We're going to go more into this world. So let's go with analog and digital. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through two VCOs. Remember, what is a VCO? A voltage controlled oscillator. We're going to go through two VCOs and I want to just put to bed the idea that analog and digital sound better or worse than each other because it doesn't matter. I'm telling you that right now. They have a different character, yes. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to play two VCOs. I'm going to mess with them, okay? We're going to take a sound bath right now and I want you to decide which one you think is analog and which one you think is digital and I'm, I just love doing this okay so so here we go sound, sound bath this is oscillator or VCO I should say VCO because that's a better way to say it. it's an oscillator number one
us, for a show of hands, which of these oscillators, actually no, was oscillator one analog or digital? If it's analog, raise your hand. Oh, no. Okay. If oscillator two, you have to make a decision. We only had one wave shape on the second <laughs> oscillator, man. Let's hear some more wave shapes on the second oscillator, man. It, it moves through, and this one moves entirely through oscillators fluidly. Oh, what? <laughs> Alright, so, so let, let's, for, for the first oscillator, was it analog or digital? It was analog. Analog. The second oscillator, was it analog? Digital. Okay, so just like last time, just like last time, the same exact amount of votes went for both oscillators. There was like about six or seven people that raised their hand for each. What does that tell you? You don't know. Nobody knows. <laughs> it's source material, right? It doesn't matter. Okay, it's so, how you so, so I'll, I'll tell you. The, the first oscillator you heard, the, the, the dual prismatic oscillator by Make Noise, is an analog oscillator. It's like totally analog. The uh, Loquelic Iteritas. By noise engineering is an entirely digital module, but they both operate at what? Audio, rate. audio frequency, audio rate frequency is. response, audio rate. So you can hear it, okay? They both do a lot of really awesome things, and they sound great. They're really cool. That they all have different applications. Now, none of this is filtered, so you got you're like they kind of sound great. It also, kind of sounds like death. You know? <laughs> sounds like death. I, I forgot I had a mic. <laughs> Technology. It also sounds a little harsh, right? Well, so back in the day, this guy that you might be familiar with named Bob Moog, right? Right, Bob Moog? He kind of, along with many, many people before him, uh, he kind of honed it all in. But he came up with something that helped us out a little bit. And... This technology that was developed was a subtractive synthesis. And so what we're going to do is we're now going to take our incredibly harsh super death sound. Right? That's a super death sound right there. Super death. More super death. Oh. That's, that's, a, that's a good super death sound. And what we're going to do is we're going to remove the hose, okay? The voltage is now coming down this, coming down this, this line right here. We're going to put it into a filter. Okay? What? Anyone want to make a guess as to what type of filter I'm using right now? It's a very common... It's a low-pass filter, exactly. And this is a very good low-pass filter. This is one of my favorites. Add a little resonance to it. Very common synthesizer sound, right? You've all heard this before. So. That makes this incredibly harsh signal. So here's here's what it would sound like totally bypassed. We take, we take a little bit of that nasty high end off of there, and all of a sudden we've got a usable tone, right? Pretty cool, pretty awesome. Like it, like the sound of it, happy with it. How fun is that, okay? So all of these devices, and the reason I'm showing you this first is because this is the easiest thing. I think subtractive synthesis is the easiest thing to understand, okay? It doesn't matter what's happening over here. This oscillator right now is probably making what I would assume to be kind of a phase modulated, I would say like a square, or maybe a saw or something. The reason I'm showing you this is that this is going to help you understand what's going on. I'm going out of the VCO into the filter. I'm going out of the filter into the output, okay? That's all that's happening. This, this is a very basic, what you might call a very basic patch. So where it gets interesting is how you start to have a really cool synergy going on between all of these different modules. And maybe you want to clock it. Let's go ahead and just, let's just go ahead and start with the next thing that we'll do, okay? So. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send this VCO out of here into some other modules, all right? So one thing I could do is I could send it into what's known as a VCA. And let me show you how unbelievably impressive a VC or VCA is. It's a voltage-controlled attenuator. Attenuator, super nerdy. All that this module does, the only thing that it does is it takes signal and turns it off. Why would that be useful? 
It's just a hose spigot. That's the best way to. This is a hose spigot. I am. I am reducing the voltage amplitude. Right. The other trick that we have. The only other trick that we have. We only have two tricks. Remember. The two tricks that we have is making voltage go up or down in frequency and up and down in amplitude. So now I'm adding amplitude and I'm taking it away. Why would that be useful? I don't have a guess as to why that would be useful. Why would I want uh, to more, attenuate voltage? More gain, less volume. Sure, sure. So volume control, exactly. So what I can do is I can now take an envelope, okay? Some of you synthesis people out there, if you're a synthesis person, know that an envelope can control various aspects of your patch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this little envelope right here. I'm going to push the little loop button. Boink. And now, if I put it into my VCA, watch. And now whenever it cycles, it's going to make a... I can speed it up. some musical sense into this relative what I would consider nonsense. Does that sound like a good idea to everybody? So I'm going to use another envelope and I'm going to put it on loop mode like the first one is, okay? And remember, all I'm doing is I'm taking voltage and sending it down a cable and it's doing stuff. There's all these little jacks here. See this jack, 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 forever? Maybe like, uh, you know, 200 jacks on this whole thing, maybe 300, I don't know, I've never counted, but how cool is this? Now I'm going to take another looping envelope, and it's going to loop slower than the first one, okay? And what is it going to do? It's going to change the cutoff frequency of my low-pass filter. Classic, classic, classic move here. So those envelopes are going at the same time, but I can change characteristics of the envelope, okay? What I'm going to do is this is going to be a faster decay. Audio rate. And now we've got three things going at audio rate. I'm getting ahead of myself, though. Let's go ahead and do a classic... Now what do we have? Kick drum, right? Yeah. How cool is that? We got a little resonance to it. Get a little more transient. Deeper. You in the back can probably hear that. I can't hear the low frequency up here. See what I'm saying? You guys get what's going on? How cool is that, right? Yeah. We're using analog and digital source material, and we're sending it through a filter, and we're smacking the hell out of it. Woo! What's that? It's like a side trance kick, right? That's how the stuff is made. All those little sample packs you guys download on the internet, all made by using synthesis techniques, right? At least if they're electronic drums. Uh, you know, like the, the 808 kick drum, kind of more of this number. Get a little longer there. 
Maybe we'll get a different pitch. So you can just, these little changes, can you can make a million sounds out of it, right? So this is where we're starting to get musical, right? We have a sample now. We could sample that, we could use that somewhere. But I want to take it a step further, okay? We've got these envelopes going. Sometimes we can go into audio rate. <laughs> what I want to do now is I want to talk about notes. So something else that Bob Moog did, and, and, and maybe the most important discovery or uh, standard, I guess. It's probably just a standard, you know? Someone else kind of figured this out before. But when frequency moves, it's really hard for me to just go, okay, well, I'm gonna put this in the here, and, and I'm gonna turn this up, and I'm gonna just say, all right. It's really hard for me to play music with turning a knob, right? I can't get the note exactly. Like I have to, it's hard to do. So what did Bob Buck do? He made a standard known as the volts, which is a measurement of voltage, which is a measurement of, in terms of what we're doing, frequency, right? So he took volts, and he was like, okay, volts. Volts, how many volts would be per octave of a musical scale? And he figured out the math, so that now I have all these modules that have these little 1V slash OCT. So the standard that has been established, and the reason any synthesizer that you play nowadays plays on a musical scale and you can play with your buddies to a certain degree, especially if it's a digital one, is that there's a volts per octave thing that goes on, meaning that if I play C here, and then I play the next C up, what is that? One volt per every octave, okay? So I don't really know how that breaks down, I've never really looked into it, but for each little different semitone, it's a specific amount of voltage that changes. There you go. Boom. One, one, one semitone unit. Thank you, sir. So now we have a volts per octave scale, so we can have a lot of fun now. We can be like, oh, I can make musical intervals. So what I'm going to do now is add something that changes the voltage per step. What device is that? If it changes voltage per step, what, what, what device is that? Anything. Over time. Anything could be anything. A sequencer. A sequencer. Right. Right. That's about... See, uh, synthesis techniques, as you get kind of farther into it, you need other synthesizers or synthesizer aspects to even explain what you're talking about. So it's hard to define precisely, but something that changes voltage over time could be considered a sequencer. You could also say that something that changes voltage over time is just voltage, because that's all that's happening here. Once again, I just want to keep reiterating that all that's happening here is we're either changing amplitude or frequency. So what I'm going to go now is I'm going to come out of a... This is a, let's see, this guy, let's go, let's go out of this guy. This will be fun. So, I'm gonna go out of a sequencer, okay, into the volts per octave input. Remember, we're talking about volts per octave. Let's go ahead and actually, for the fun of it, let's go ahead and listen to this oscillator. We're gonna, get, we're gonna go analog now. We're gonna listen to this oscillator. It's gonna go into a filter, blah, 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 blah. I'm gonna go out of there into this guy. And so this is our, let me get it back to, Let's find a wave we like, right? Okay, so here's our tone. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push play on my sequencer, okay? And I'm gonna go into the volts per octave input. Here we go. Is that music? Or Anthony, are you sure that's music? I don't know if that's music. It's kind of just odd and strange, and it's hurting my face right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, plug into a digital module. What the digital module does is it listens to the frequency, and it forces the frequency into a musical scale. What is that device called? Quantizer. Quantizer, exactly. This guy over here. So what we're going to do, we're going to go into this quantizer. Boink. And I'm going to be able to pick, let's see... Let's go with the nice cutie pie C minor. And here we go. Now we have a, what I would consider. Right? How fun is that? And now with my sequencer, I'm sequencing this kind of note. I have a couple random things going on. It's changing some of the notes, but for the most part, it's doing this. But you're like, all right, Anthony, that's cool, but man, it's just like... 
There's no dynamics, you know? Let's, let's, let's talk about that. So, the device I showed you earlier was a VCA. Remember the VCA? What is a VCA? A voltage-controlled attenuator or amplifier, depending upon what's going on. Most of the time, it's an attenuator, nine times out of ten. Some synthesizers, they actually have amp cir circuits inside of them, so you can add distortion. It's kind of fun. But I'm going to plug this whole entire fun thing that we got going on here. I'm going to reroute it out of, let's go out of the oscillator into the VCA, out of the VCA into the filter, and then into the filter, I want to take the gate signal. Now, what is a gate? A gate is a, it's a one very loud spit of voltage, okay? And that little loud spit can make all kinds of fun stuff happen. So I'm just spitting up into this, uh, <laughs> into this, guy right here. Now now that I have this going, I can take that spit signal that's coming out of this sequencer. Here, let's listen, right? Now I'm going to cut off the water, okay? I'm cutting off the voltage by plugging into the VCA. Here we go. There we go. Now we've got some action going on. I can change various aspects. And so I hope you can see why I would need a VCA. The reason I need a VCA is that the, the, the envelope generator is just making envelopes. It's just making voltage do this. That's not enough. You have to remove signal in order to get what's going on. So that's why we say attenuator. When you attenuate water on a stick, you turn it off, right? So you could say, if you really wanted to be a synth nerd about it, you could be like, uh, when you're watering your garden, you could be like, Hey guys, I'm going to attenuate the water real quick. Yeah. Sweet, right? So that's what's going on here, okay? I've now got what I would consider a complete... Uh, this would be considered a complete subtractive patch, okay? This is subtractive synthesis. We're subtracting various aspects. We're subtracting what? Frequency. Frequency. And we're subtracting amplitude. Exactly. Here we go. Alright, so that's cool. It's musical. I can change this. I can change this for different aspects of it. Super fun. So the next thing I want to talk about is some more advanced stuff. Where this thing gets fun is where you start to get like all these things firing all over the place. The next thing I have is a clock signal that's being generated from my uh, sequencer here. So I'm gonna take this clock signal and let's choose something. Uh, the Woggle Bug. This thing is super cool. So, the Woggle Bug, what it does is it's called a sample and hold. Anyone have a guess as to what a sample and hold does? It samples, exactly! And what else does it, does it do? It holds! What is it sampling if we're using this device? It generates a DC waveform from the DC changing AC waveform. Right, but before that it's just sampling <laughs> voltage. Voltage. That's all it's doing. It's taking voltage and it's sampling it. Okay, so... So this is our sequence that we got going on, right? <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take... I put a clock signal that's coming out of my uh, sequencer. And I'm sampling an internal oscillator inside of this thing. So let's pick the stepped output. I'm going to plug this into the filter and say, Okay, filter, I want you to open and close your frequency. And I have to turn it down in order to get this right because it adds voltage, okay? I'm going to take this and put it into the, let's put this all the way at zero. Now we got some more action going on, and it's all randomized. It's, this little device has an oscillator inside of it, okay? We can listen to it too, it's horrible sounding, but uh, it's got an oscillator inside of it, and it's being sampled. And it's telling the filter, here, just open and close at random, 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 random. And that's where the fun is with modular. It comes up with stuff that you couldn't think of. It does it by itself, right? I can take this... That's pretty cool. So now we've got kind of a more complex thing going on, right? We've, we've, we've transcended the, the classic synthesis, synthesizer architecture, and we're moving into new places, all right? So the next thing we can do is we can start to detune the first oscillator and give it just some... 
Okay, now we're getting somewhere. This is starting to get musical. Because what happens in, in nature, in life, when we sing, it moves around, right? What else happens in nature that's not happening right now? When we're synthesizing sound. What else happens in nature all the time? Any sound that's ever made? Reverberation. Reverberation, precisely. So, man, who is this guy over here? I'm an electrical engineer, sorry. It's totally possible sorry. that you're a figment of my imagination. No, and sorry. <laughs> I'm really tired. Yeah, sorry. Thank you. No, I'm really, I'm really happy. That's, that's great. So I'm going to turn this up. We're going to add some reverb, and, and instantly you're going to be like, okay, this isn't so odd. What's happening? Let's actually do it this way. Like this. And you know what else is really fun? Just because this this is kind of bothering me, I'm going to change the delay of some of these gates. Just a little shuffle. That's a little better, right? The young kids love shuffle songs. You guys are like, man, I love Ott's music. Why? It's all shuffle. It's awesome. Now we got a really cool sequence going on. We got reverb, and you know what else we can do? Hey, Anthony, we got that. What about that clock signal we got? That thing was pretty cool. I'm gonna plug into a new device. Actually, my bad, wrong one. I'm gonna plug into what's known as the most basic, basic module that's out there. Anyone have a guess as to what the most basic module on this whole rack is? Even less than that, believe it or not. There's one called a malt. What do you think a malt does? All it does is it just, you plug signal into it and it makes the same signal come out other outputs. So I have this clock signal, it's only coming from one place. I need to send clock everywhere, so I'm just gonna plug it into my malt, and all of a sudden I've got, I can send clocks, I got clocks on clocks, girl. I can send clocks everywhere that I wanna go. So the first thing, I, back into this guy, we got clocks going there. So now we got, we got our effects still going. I'm gonna take another clock signal. Let's put it into the, the delay time. And so now I can add clock sync delay. Now we got dynamics, because the delay's a little quieter than the original signal, okay? Are you guys following this journey this far? The only thing that's happening right now is voltage is being manipulated in two different ways, frequency and amplitude. That's it. I mean, there's a there's a digital analog converter inside of this because this reverb is what? It's digital. Very difficult to make analog reverb unless you have a spring and a microphone, and they actually make modules that do that, which is cool. But So, a various, various aspects of this patch is what's known as generative, okay? What I mean by that is that the module that this woggle bug right here is making random voltage, okay? And as you can tell, I, I haven't attenuated that voltage, so if I have the, the frequency all the way down, and this parameter all the way up, sometimes it'll go away, sometimes it'll be there. Isn't that cool? Sometimes it's gone, sometimes it's there. That's generative. That's, that's the first step in, in causing something generative. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to feed some different voltage into my sequencer, and I'm going to have it change over time what notes are being picked. In fact, you know what would be even more fun than that? I'm going to pull this. This is my, my notes that's being made. I'm going to send a clock signal out of my sequencer into a Turing machine. Anyone know what a Turing machine is? Anyone want to take a stab at what a Turing machine is? Exactly. It was an algorithmic. It was an algorithmic. Uh, it was the first computer made uh, by Alan Turing to try to figure out what the heck the Nazis were talking about during World War II. And actually, you could say that potentially he saved the the the, yes. the good the good yes. people and and saved the world by making this computer. Uh, so uh, that's the score one for technology there. You know what I mean? Like we didn't all end up in whatever the heck was going to happen. Uh, but, uh, so now, I have this clock signal running into this, this guy right here. I'm gonna put it into the clock input. The Turing machine, all that it does, is it just makes 
Random frequency. But it's running through a quantizer, so what does that mean? It's only going to come in on the notes that I want it to. It's a totally random thing. So this, we're getting even more generative. This machine is making this music up. And how does it do that? What's happening is that inside of this Turing machine, it just has an oscillator, and what that oscillator makes is pink noise. Okay? So let's listen to that uh, signal by itself. That's, what's, that's what this device is making by itself. But what happens is, is that over time there's a sample and hold circuit. What noise actually is, is all frequencies all at once in a random way, okay? It's just all frequencies being hit. Right? And every nanosecond, or however long you want the sample and hold to last, it will grab the rising edge of that, of that frequency and hold it. Okay? But what's cool is that I can turn off the random nature of it. So I'm gonna wait till I find something I like. put it on something more like eight so I get more than one note. Now the filter's moving around still, right? I'll turn it up more so you can you can tell. But that sequence of notes is just repeating every eight steps. Turn it back to random. So I can lock it into these cool note patterns. So when someone's performing with a modular synthesizer, nine times out of ten, they're going to have a patch that's kind of close to what they want, right? And they're going to be messing with these parameters. So instead of playing this thing directly, like strumming the cables, you know, you're changing the parameters of the music, okay? So one performance aspect that I would do is I would say, okay, well, I've got control over the gates. I've got control over the... Uh, envelopes, I can change those. I can change the sequence. I got more like a bass line going. Maybe I want to do a delay wash. Maybe I want to change the pitch of the delay. Right? Or maybe I want to... Maybe I want to change the rhythm. I can I can go to my my probability. Okay, I can change the frequency. So this is what I would be doing. I'm interacting with an instrument. So why is this so awesome? Why is this so powerful? Because pretty much I'm removing. I come from a world where my instrument reacts right when I play it. Like, it does everything that I tell it to do. It is a completely controlled situation. So why would somebody like me, who's a musician, you know, and I'm used to that, why would I want something like this when the controls are removed from me? Well, that's, I feel like what's happening is I'm interacting with something that's alive, right? This voltage, it's, it's sampling noise. And have you, have you ever heard of a random number generators before? It's been found that when there's great distress in the world, or when there's when there's a huge occurrence where everybody's focused on one thing, or like the Olympics, for example, these random number generators start to generate similar numbers. I think that's super interesting. And a lot of my device here is making random voltage, okay? It has random number generator computers inside of it, okay? Especially if they're digital. And so what's, what's rad about that is, let's say something's going down. The music that ends up coming out of this device, it might be, just might be, just maybe, might be, I don't know, making music that is supposed to happen. How cool is that, right? Yeah. It's pretty interesting. Yeah, it's probabilistic. So, yeah, it's probabilistic. Exactly. How <laughs> fun is that? So I really, really just enjoy the angle that this that this device gives me and, and the, the, the musical quality of this. Now, getting into more of these modules, uh, and I'm, I'm going to just open it up to questions here because I kind of just like flew through this and I know that a lot of this information is really crazy. But I hope I made it basic enough for you to understand at least like what's going on. But what I want to say before before I do that is that these are all mom and pop companies, okay? They're very small companies, most of them. They're just 
making these 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 little devices and they're trying to do the very best job they can at one function okay like some of them have multiple functions but like this vco by noise engineering i think is a work of art it's amazing and it's just one device all that it does is go right that's all that it does forever it's all it's gonna, ever going to do is just going to go blah. But it's awesome that it blah. It blahs better than most other blahs, right? That's cool. So so each one of these has that has that thing. And then some of them, like uh, the mutable stuff, is uh, open source technology. So as you can tell, I have two clouds here. One clouds and other clouds, just a different faceplate. What's cool about that is that they've released their technology to the world. And they're like, hey, if you know how to use uh, a soldering iron and a couple other things, and you have some friends that are better than you at it, like me, because I really messed it up and then they fixed it for me, you can build your own, right? And that's how a lot of people get into this world. People are saying, well, this is way too expensive. No, it's not. No, it's not. You just have to not eat ever and like sleep on your friend's couch. And you're great, right? Or you have a basement full of stuff and your girlfriend's like, dude, what is all this shit? Get rid of it all and, and consolidate. And this was my consolidation of all my old like crappy instruments. It was just, that's all I did, right? So, did you build it? So I built some of it, some of it. Uh, a lot of, I mean, a lot of, so each one of these modules, and the way that this works is I can take one of these out and it's got a 15 pin cable, that's all that it is. 15 pin goes in there, and all the power of this whole thing is generalized into a 15 volt system. That's all. So I just plug into this rail, and so anyone that makes a module for the Eurorack format, is what it's called, Eurorack, right? I can put into this and I can make a synthesizer entirely from scratch. Right? It's awesome. This is a lesson over here. Hey, buddy. Hey, brother. You, you mind sitting down real quick? The guys in the back want to see. Cool, thank you. Uh, so, so yeah, now we have like a really awesome system that I made myself, right? So I could choose from a thousand different modules, and I would make my own sound. And, and, and so the more modules that I get and the different things that I create in here, I make a new sound that I've never heard before. How amazing is that? It's so incredible. And so not only that, when I unplug all this, what, what does that mean? If I unplug this whole thing, what would happen then? No sound, but I also would lose my patch. Especially if it's complex one, I'll probably never make that sound ever again. And to me, that's exciting. Because I've been on a laptop like, uh, filter down. This interaction with a physical instrument, any of you that own a synthesizer, there's really nothing like it. There's nothing like it. There's nothing like being able to touch something physical and, and moving it, you know? I hope in the future that synthesizers have really big controls, like, you know, like Paul Bunyan bass, you know, it's like... <laughs> Or like some guy's like opening a filter and he has to like turn this huge like crank, you know? Like, I feel like there should be more performance to this this stuff, you know? So I, I hope that I've, I've I've summed this up and and uh, I'm ready for questions. So who's got one? What's your sequencer module? Uh, right now I'm using the uh, Maleco uh, Variegate Eight Plus, which I like. I don't love. I like it. It's it's really it's probabilistic. That's the whole thing is probabilistic, which is awesome. That's cool. Al Jorgensen's company for ministry and stuff. Yeah, yeah they're yeah. fantastic yeah, yeah. and they make amazing devices and. And it's, I would say it's probably one of the most powerful probabilistic sequencers, probably the most Eurorack powerful prob probabilistic sequencer out there. Uh, it's nice, like nice. next to the Circlon and next mm -hmm. to like some of the other, uh, the Cle, yeah. the big Cle, probably seen well, that huge Cle before. A different whole animal, yeah, totally awesome. different whole animal, yeah. but also probabilistic and, and super rad. Yeah. But yeah, uh, it, it truly is awesome and it has a little partner module that has uh, eight sequencers in it and it's, it's all like in a row. So you can program them together and you can save songs inside of it. And it'll it'll have like so imagine there's you know what is it eight gates right two more CV and then two or eight plus that so you have just an endless amount of control cool. and you can do your whole show from just messing with nice, those nice. you know it was pretty cool. Yeah. What else? Uh, what's a a good resource to keep learning about this? So <laughs> it's really embarrassing, but the but where I learned most of of the stuff about the modular stuff is this website called. Muff Wiggler. Oh. It's literally called. The synthesizer nerds want to know why more women aren't involved in this, and it's like you guys are so ridiculous. Why is this website called that? But it's it's a really awesome resource, and there's a lot of uh, amazing female composers uh, in in the modular world. Uh, Caitlin Aurelia Smith is my favorite, and I have like a lot of her live uh, improvisations. She's incredible. Uh, in the in the, the Pacific Northwest, amazing artist, and she uses a lot of the make noise stuff, which actually comes from my hometown in Asheville now. So uh, pretty awesome stuff, and she really does a great job. But yeah, it's called Muff Wiggler. And then there's also this guy uh, Div Kid, and YouTube is a great place, you know. So I, I watched him kind of break down some stuff, and it helped me figure out what I was trying to do. 
Like, I built this system because it, it helps me accomplish the tasks that I want. Most of the time when I'm recording bass, for example, in a track, uh, and it's like an earthquake track, for example, a lot of the digital stuff, I can't seem to get the warmth. And like when you listen to it on laptop speakers, I'm not hearing the, the low end. And I wanted more like harmonic character. So when I discovered the DPO, I actually sold this module one time and I was like, oh, oh my God, I have to buy it back again because this thing just makes bass so well and it sounds beautiful and there's like harmonic content and it's it stays in tune very well for mo most analog stuff it, it can kind of vary it really is accurate over something like 11 octaves and that's a really crazy hard engineering feat to do to stay accurate even over eight let alone and this one stays accurate over 21 octaves this this uh digital module which is which is also pretty hard my computer the operator on in ableton live it maybe does 12 or 13 at the very most this can go any direction and you don't, you're like, well, I can't hear any, I can't hear the difference between 21 octaves, but you actually can if you're using control voltage. You, you feel me? So if I, if I want like a, a, a dividends of a certain waveform all the way down and I'm using it not at audio rate, I need that to stay accurate at very, very low frequencies. And this thing does that very well. How so, long yeah. have you been, when, when did you pick this up? Uh, let's see. Well, I've been I've been in synthesis since I was uh, living in my parents' house on their computer using Fruity Loops. But I uh, <laughs> remixing Mega Man songs. But I I got into the modular stuff about uh, a year and a half ago. Okay. So that now what you're demonstrating earlier, it sounded like blue tech, like, like spot on. Is like that? Do you know if he uses things? So Evan's one of the blue tech. Is, He's one of my like heroes, and and the reason I say that is because he refuses to sample anything. Refuses to. He synthesizes all of his sounds from scratch, or from you know from from pre-built patches or something like that. The guy is a genius in every possible way, and so the reason that this sounds like that, there's a lot of artists that 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 are purists like that, but the reason that his music sounds like that is because he's synthesizing all of his sounds, and that takes so much time, you know. And 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 I I, I wish people knew what goes into that, and and like. I think that once people start to listen to that music, oh, that's, yeah, yeah, that, that's what he sounds like. But what that actually means is he doesn't necessarily sound specifically like that. He's making those sounds. And so it's the signature of someone who's taking the time to go in and not find some womp on the internet. Be like, oh, that womp would fit perfectly in my womp womp sauce. He's like, he's making, you know, it's so awesome. And Apex Twin, I just recently oh, yeah. bought the album Syro the first time I discovered it. Like, it's so good. Last week. Yeah, Ciro, if you guys want to listen to some, some really amazing mo uh, modular, uh, and not only modular, but um, the reason I discovered uh, Make Noise, for example, is I was looking at the Ciro, uh, we're talking about Richard E. James, Apex Twin, he made this crazy fan list of gear, right? And it said, Make Noise, DPO, Asheville, North Carolina, and I'm like, what? And so I wrote them a message, I'm like, you guys... You guys realize your feature? Like, yeah, bro, we know. I'm like, can I come in and see what you do? And then I walked in there, and some guy did the same thing that just happened to y'all. He showed me this stuff, and I was just like, oh, I have to have that now, you know. And then I, and then that's why I haven't eaten anything in a really long time. But uh, yeah, so I mean, it was cool to have made that full circle thing. In the upper right between the two clouds, is that a Rossum module? Yeah, it is. So uh, Dave Rossum has has. What does has, that do? Like? So this is this is a this is amazing. It's a comb filter, right? But it can morph between not only two parameters but three. And and what's light. cool about it is it's, it's I, I think the way that it works is a digital wavetable. And as you move audio through it, it phases your audio to uh, filter it in any way. So you can it has like filters in it that are like um, uh, one of them is like a guitar pick. Like it'll make the sound that it, what happens when you move up and down the string on a guitar pick or something. I just got this, so I don't want to demo it. Every time I mess with it, I haven't really figured out how to not make it do really bad things. So, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna mess with that just yet. But I'm really loving it. I, I've already made like four or five songs. One of the one of the really interesting things that I think Dave Ross and pretty much spearheaded was the idea of using a flanger and a low pass filter in series with each other and locking the frequency together, and it makes that like. Uh, familiar with uh, who's an artist that uses that a lot I guess like crystal method has that kind of that kind of sound like they really use the those two kind of things combined together it was pretty cool Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Very yeah. 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 oh what is the difference between a patch and a preset that's a great question so the, the difference is is that a preset 
if you see preset listed in gear that you're looking at, all that means is that you can, you can recall whatever internal patch uh, by choosing a number or a name, okay? And then a patch is a preset if you can call it up. If you can't call it up, it's just simply a patch, right? And so this patch, once I do a couple things, you know, and I don't remember what, I, what was going on, I don't know what happened. But what's cool about it is, I shouldn't say that I can't necessarily make the same sound twice, it's that I might lose the subtleties of, of it, you know? I know how to do a 2 op FM patch, I know how to do amplitude modulation, I know how to make all this stuff happen, but I don't necessarily know exactly what I did the last time in order to get that to happen, okay? And then the more cables you use, I got a lot of cables, like about four times as many as these, and sometimes uh, <laughs> Melissa will come downstairs and I'm just covered in cables and I got just cables all over the place and like I finally done it you know what I mean and like this like thing and like we'll just sit there and it'll go for 20 minutes making entirely a song by itself using probability you know and so that's I, I would say that that is also a patch but it's definitely not a preset because I, I could never recall it Jeff feels Always push record. <laughs> so, so y'all, y'all familiar with the song we have back, Trollio? It's, it was yeah. a, it was a serious, serious undertaking because it was a very, very intense patch. It took a very long time to make, um, and it took all my cables. And it was one of those when I was like, I got it. And you know how like it, you, what you hear is you hear like a chord, dun 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 dun. Well, it goes from one note to three, and then back to one to three. And it was a generative process that, that I figured that out. I mean, it was a digital oscillator with an analog filter and a couple other things inside of it, a distortion and a comb filter. And it was exactly what I was trying to get. And when I discovered it, I was like, that's it. And I, I, I've been recording for the last uh, 25 or 26 minutes, and I had to go back in there and find exactly what that was. And then the middle part, remember when you saw, maybe you saw the video that me and Mike made? Well, that whole thing, that was all live. So one of them was, was a lot of work, and the other one was just a live improv that we did in the basement and recorded it with video. So you're actually watching, when you watch that video, you're watching, that was a generative uh, improv that me and Mike were doing. So, uh, yeah, and, and so out of that, uh, then the rest of the band came in, they're like, well, if we tried this, what if we tried that, and it became a song. So you can see how this device for that song was the original inspiration for the whole thing, the end, you know, da 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 that was this guy, you know? Uh, actually, it wasn't this big at that point. It was still only about half its size because I have uh, an affliction known as gas. Gear acquisition syndrome. Okay. Look out. Look out. Anyone that wants to get into this world, it's awesome, but it's very addicting, and you're always like, I, I, thought I could do that? Oh, I gotta get it, bro. I can do that one. So, yeah, you gotta be careful. Sure, sure. Well, check this out. I have a module called MIDI to CV. What's CV? Control, Control voltage. Y'all learn real fast. So MIDI to CV, what does that mean? That means I can plug in a cable coming from Ableton Live into the MIDI to CV thing. And what do you think that the MIDI to CV thing spits out? What kind of signal? CV, CV right. Okay. But what kind of signal? What character? Yeah, it, a gate and a volts per octave signal, right? So if I'm playing ba da 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 dang ding ding on a, on a MIDI keyboard, I can get that to come into here and I can play coherent notes. So a lot of the way that I'm writing leads now, because uh, I have like this amazing tone that I can make, like, especially for like monophonic voices, meaning a single note at a time, I can make really beautiful like you know Tycho esque like kind of sounds, or I can I can go in there and make like really complex sequences and stuff from my computer or from a MIDI controller and I can play the modular synthesizer with that. The modular synthesizer is literally capable of anything as long as you add that functionality to it. So one of the things I thought of was, hey, I want to have at least duophonic, meaning two notes at the same time, functionality via MIDI. I actually have quadraphonic uh, functionality via my, my sequencers, but I have duophonic if I want to play like two note chords and stuff, and I can add to that. I can just keep adding it to an expandable system. I can eventually have eight notes if I have enough, enough oscillators and filters and blah, blah, blah. You get, the, you get the picture, but I have a MIDI to CV, and that's how I do that. So, so when you ask, like, 
am I improvising? Most of the time, if I turn around and mess with this thing, it's all improv because that's what's so fun about this thing. It is pretty much an improv machine, right? Does it start, like, if you start on song one and you're messing with it and then you stop and then you turn it off and you start playing the guitar and then three songs later, when you turn it, when you start messing with it again, are you essentially just tweaking the same patch that you had going before and it's just clicking to a different MIDI? Yeah, you know, I'll make, so before the show, I'll make, I'll make a certain patch that has pretty much what I want to do in it and I'll rarely kind of move cables around because Look, I just got too much to think about. Yeah. In the Earth Car uh, set, it's totally different though. It's like I will, I will move cables all the time because I, I, it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? It's, it's even more freeform there. Uh, but when you're playing with four other musicians, you can't take up too much sonic territory or at the end of the show, like, bro, you got something to prove, man. Like, seriously. So you, just, you, know, you don't want to cross the line. Yeah, yeah. You know. Anything else? I have a question for, yeah. uh, for Earth Cry, actually. Yeah. Well, some path was right when I got this thing, and I had a bunch of old music that I was like, man, this is just... Okay, I've heard this before. You know, and then I got this thing, and so all those tracks came back to life because, again, I started getting that the low end that I wanted out of the DPO. Almost every bass line you hear on, on Sun Path was, was an analog uh, bass line made from this guy. Uh, and, and it just re-inspired me. So um, I think Sun Path, the song, because it was made with uh, the modular synthesizer so much, and that like dong 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 was using car plus strong, which is just tune delay, oh, and it was like, cool. it really, it, it, all that whole world came in, and it was just so inspiring. And so now I feel like a whole resurgence in that like composition outside of the band has uh, been kind of it comes up, and then, and then it, it was so inspiring that it made it into the band too, you know, like and and uh, so like the pattern integrity is like a lot of the songs started out as modular patches. Or, or a keyboard idea like Sam wrote or something and then like I was like oh can I take that and mess with it you know and it, it, that's what that's what happened so so yeah it kind of saved me in some ways uh, of getting inspiration is what what else can we do we've done this we've done that what else can we do and so now I, I'm turning back around and looking at the band and I'm like oh man now what we what we should be doing is we should be looking at different ways to perform so I think the next thing we're looking at is like sampling and like you know maybe we'll all get like you know grid pads and like you know do like cool like mpc style stuff just because we haven't done it before you know what i mean and, and it's just inspiring so if you're a musician and you're getting caught like you don't have to go this hard this is going hard okay but like get a mandolin if you're a guitar player get like a you know just try something different and get a flute if you're figuring something else out and like maybe you'll be like wow okay all of a sudden like 400 more songs happen and i know that for the rest of my life as long as i keep doing that you know, I'm sure I'm gonna just eventually just scrap all this stuff and like get a banjo and like maybe that's what'll happen. You know, and, like, it'll help me because I'll be like, oh, wow, the way that this is formed. Like, I mean, if you've ever went from a guitar to a keyboard, we were just doing this today. Voicing on a keyboard is hard to do on a guitar. You have to, or on a guitar or on a keyboard, the notes are so far apart the way that the guitar works that it's like it doesn't make sense. So, the music that you create, depending on what you have, will totally inspire you, and it's awesome. Yeah, the rings. Right it yeah. truly is yeah. my fa one of my favorite modules, yeah, yeah, man. It's yeah. amazing. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's gorgeous, and it's it's quadraphonic too. If you put it in that mode, oh, so you can do like really nice, cool. Nice. Uh, uh, Phipps uh, in Soundchart was using it last night. He he had one in a he has a keyboard that has a full proctored output on the keyboard, so he just puts modules into the keyboard. Sick. Nice. I was trying to talk to him. They they were, they were being reclusive yesterday, but like it, they 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 shred it, <laughs> and they use the rings like in two or three songs. And it's nice. really, really impressive because it's mega finicky and doesn't want to stay in tune with other things. So I was really, I was really thrilled. I only use this one. I barely use this live. If I'm using it, it's more of a percussive. Uh, it sounds like a bongo or something because yeah, yeah, yeah. it can do that boom, boom, boom yeah. kind of sound. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, my this thing module here is a has a has a voltage uh, input that can translate that into a volts per octave output, okay? So, so what it does is it listens to the amplitude and it listens to the frequency of my guitar and it turns it into modular standard. And so it, it outputs two different outputs. Usually the, these little blinking guys right here, one of them is an envelope, right? So bow, bow. So I can plug that into a VCA, okay? And so if I go bow, I can make the signal come in and out. The next thing I can do is I can take the other output, which is a volts per octave output, put it into a VCO, and it'll track my notes. So then I can run that into the VCA, and what I, what the end result is, 
boom, boom, and it's ridiculous. Like it squiggles out, you know, because it hears like it hears everything. So you know, it's hard to like control. But I've definitely written parts because sometimes things ask for that wiggly sound, uh, and it's getting better. Like our our technology is getting closer to being able to interface. Uh, uh, a lot more envelope following kind of stuff, and um, I most of the time use it for envelope following. What that means is that when it hears a sound, it'll open or close the VCA. So if I put a, a drum line in there, and I have a synthesizer going, I can make that happen via an outside input. Pretty fun. Okay, uh, I'm probably getting close to the end of my... Yeah, we got 10 more minutes. So a couple, couple more questions and we're probably good. What's up, man? Yeah, sure. Uh, on... Yeah, yeah. So, so the DPO is my favorite module of all time because it's so capable of every possible, like, kind of combination of sound, and it's a complex oscillator. And what that means is that there are two oscillators inside of this. Like, uh, might as well, might as well show and tell it, right? Yeah, it's by Make Noise. Make Noise is from Asheville, and, and they, they they brought me into this whole world. Like, I went in there, and if, if y'all are ever visit, visiting Asheville, call Make Noise before you get there. Even if you don't feel like you're ever going to do this, just go in there and be amazed, because they're amazing people, they're really nice, and uh, they just they just know what they're talking about. And, and they'll, just, they'll, they'll, they'll blow your mind, because they'll say all these words you don't understand, and you'll just be like, what is happening? So, one thing we didn't do yet is frequency modulation, and, and this... Just, just inside of it, it's already in there. Okay, so we'll turn the reverb down real quick. So here's just a straight up complex oscillator sound, right? I can change various aspects of this. Like, there's a wave shape. Right, that's kind of cool. I can change the uh, phase, pulse width, right? And then I can change the folding. That's on that side. But I can take the other oscillator and mess with this oscillator in fun ways. So one thing I can do is I can say, all right, well, this oscillator is going to spin a little slower, and I'm going to add it to these controls. Just put it right about there. Now, now, now watch this. I can start adding it. That's adding it to the wave shape. Here's adding it to the angle, which is the uh, pulse width. And here's adding it to the fold amount. And so I can make just any sound, you know, and that's that's just using it for that. Now, if I want to use it for frequency modulation, This thing is just so much fun. I could just play with it. I mean, that's just one module, okay? It's not plugged into anything other than the output. This is what the first thing I got, and I just sat with it for hours. It's like, ah, ah. I love you. So yeah, that, that's a good module. I, I really enjoy it. This uh, a, uh, ADDAC uh, quantizer is, is quadraphonic. There's four inputs that I can send CV to. Any CV, whatever I can think of. I could send the oscillator into it, and it would spit out coherent music. And each one of these inputs and outputs are, are independent, so I can get all kinds of wacky stuff going on, and it's so fun. I can just I can pick a key, pick a flat or sharp, push this button, boom, it changes. So the band's like, you know, maybe Rob will turn around and be like, hey, let's go to you know, uh, you know, C sharp or something, and let's like flat the third or something. I can go in there and be like, oh, flatted third, boom, and I got a sequence going, right? So it's just like it's just it allows me to jam live really well. So I would say that. That module's amazing. The rings is really cool. Um, I, I kind of ran out of time to, to mess with it, but uh, I could literally do this all day, talk about this nerdy stuff. But yeah, those are those are really great modules. And um, you know, this filter, uh, this ladder filter here, uh, the or I should say the OTA filter here that um, Synthtech makes is just gorgeous. I don't really care for resonant filtering. It's not really my favorite sound. It's so common that I don't even use it that much. But if you're gonna go resonant filter, that is the most beautiful sounding thing. It's all analog. Gorgeous, gorgeous filter. Is Love that it. multi-mode or is that just low pass? It's multi-mode. It's got three. It's got uh, it's got three poles for low pass. But I also have an entirely analog multi-mode, uh, low pass, high pass, band pass, and actually uh, it's got notch and it can notch to the degree that it makes a phaser or an all pass. Yeah, nice. So it does everything. Nice. But it doesn't do anything really that 
it doesn't like floor you, but it's it's a great utilitarian, uh -huh. and it sounds better than anything digital that I've heard. Uh -huh. So I love it. And then then I have another filter here. I mean, filtering is a really ridiculous word because when you say filter, you think film. That doesn't mean filtering could be anything. You're just removing a certain aspect of the sound. Okay, so almost everything is filtering. Like the oscillators make everything, blah, and then you have to take out and like try to tame it into something musical, right? So I have a lot of filters because that's just what I like to do. Um, there's, I just got this module the other day. This guy is just building them in his lab in, in Russia. And this has been really cool because I've been ordering things from like Belgium, Russia, like just random places out there because uh, only some people make these. And this uh, this is a CV to MIDI. Check that out. It goes in reverse. I can use some of my, my uh, sequencer and send gates to this. And I've been running the MIDI output into Ableton Live and triggering uh, a drum rack. So <laughs> have you ever seen like uh, Richard Devine or something? Uh, kind of that aspect, but instead of using analog modules to make the, the drums, I'm using Ableton Live instead. And it's really cool. So you can do stuff at audio rate, like super fast, you know, crazy edits and glitches. And so I just got that last week from, it, he has to make them. He literally just says, I can build this, and then you just send him money and he sends it to you. So I got a package from Russia. It's cool. Like the mailman, like, it, it he just doesn't even know what's happening at my house. He's like, okay, this time it's from, oh God, what is this guy doing in his basement, you know? It's kind of funny. Who is that behind? Uh, Ladik. Oh, interesting. His name is Vladimir something. His company is called Ladik. L-A-D-I-I-K. He's uh -huh. great. He, ma he makes every module. You could actually, you can really, if you build an entire Ladik system, they take up a lot of space, but they really, really sound awesome, and they're great. They're, they're very accurate. Uh, the oscillators are very accurate. Uh, you know, uh, just great modules. I really love that company. I've had a couple of their VCOs back in the past when I was kind of, I didn't have like these the more crazy stuff, and I really enjoyed it. They were really rock solid, pretty accurate, good stuff, Ladik. Yeah, I mean, and, and that's just something to, to remember. Like, all of these modules are made, some of these, there's only like 400 of them. You know, I'll, I'll bet you that the, the M218, the thing that does the C, B to MIDI, there's probably only maybe like four or 500 out there. You know what I mean? Maybe that, I don't even know how, how well this business is doing. I just, I was like, that's the function that I want. Holy crap, because I'm using a computer at the same time. And so. The, the crosstalk between the, the modular and the computer and allowing the modular to make the decisions instead of the computer is really, really revolutionary, I think. Pretty awesome. Okay, so that's pretty much all the time I got. You guys are awesome. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope that you learned something. Thanks. Thanks for, for, for coming out. And thanks a lot, man. For moving things forward. <laughs> yeah. You guys, if you want to come up and look at it, feel free. It's really fun.